This video is powered by the EA Game Changer Network. Thank you to EA Sports for inviting us out to the FIFA 18 capture event. We had lots of good times recording lots of good FIFA 18 Ultimate Team videos. Let's get into today's. Before we get into this, guys, I wanted to let you know what this is all about. So it's a game between myself, Lasty, and and Footwiz Richie, who is a pro FIFA player, someone that competes on the highest level, goes to events, all of that type of stuff. Uh, so obviously, I wasn't like too confident about winning the game or anything like that. But I thought if we could have a game, sit down afterwards, watch it back and talk through it, uh, to get the advice and stuff off of a pro player uh, and maybe learn about some mistakes and stuff would be beneficial to me and also to you guys. You know, these pros are on a different level in terms of their FIFA ability. So if they can give any insight and stuff into how that you guys can play better, offer suggestions about formations and, and like gameplay style, I think that's going to benefit a lot of us coming into FIFA 18 Ultimate Team. Uh, now, Richie hasn't made any videos before, so I pretty much dictate the whole conversation and stuff like that and try to get him to, to be involved in our little chat and discussion. I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would go and check his channel out because you can expect more of this type of stuff from him in the future. He wants to help you guys get better so that everyone gets better and FIFA is just more competitive uh, across the board. Let's get into the video. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome to a new video here on the Fuckwiz channel. Uh, today it's going to be Lasty, the Fuckwiz content creator, versus Richie, a Fuckwiz FIFA pro. How you doing, man? All right. Good. So uh, this is my team on screen right now, and we're about to go in and actually play you and, and match up against your team. So you saw that this was my squad here, the four-one-two-one-two. I've got Yashin in goal, the legend or the icon that I managed to pack. Decent goalkeeper choice, do you think? One of the best in the game. Yeah, I mean, like I, we, we saw that he was six foot two. Yeah. Is that an issue? No. No, six foot two is okay. Six foot minimum for a keeper. Okay, but as long as they're like acrobatic yeah. and stuff, it should be okay. And good reflexes and diving. Uh, you mentioned to me earlier that you didn't like the the fact that I'd used Tony Kroos. Yeah. In my midfield, why? Why? What's what's the matter with using Kroos? Because you're playing him on the outside of uh, Diamond, and he's too slow. So it's the pace factor, right? Yeah. He's got the five star weak foot. He could come in handy. But any better options that I could have put into the squad? Maybe Isco. Isco? Oh, yeah, he's well, got he's a bit a, more pace. But defending could be a low billy. Yeah, okay, all right. So it's sort of like swings and roundabouts, really. You've got to find the right player to Balance. fit that. Yeah. yeah, to fit that formation and stuff. So if I just go through here and get to the team that you were rocking, I want to see who you were playing with. So you've got yourself a Manuel Neuer in goal. Obviously, he's massive yeah. and he's high rated. Yeah. So I can see why you've chosen that. Uh, midfield, oh, I mean, I see Ronaldo. So uh, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about that that front six of yours, your midfield and your attack. Um, they're all pretty strong. The only person who I didn't really want in there was Robin. Right. But well, I needed him to get Fidel and full chem. Yeah, so you're using Robin for chemistry, but otherwise you genuinely wouldn't have. Messi would have been my first choice. Right, yeah, of course, because he's just got the dribbling, he's got the pace, he's got everything. And I guess the Robin... Finesse shots as well. Yeah, Robin with his weak foot is, is a bit of a liability <laughs> too, I yeah. guess, right? Um, so I can see in-game there, you switch to the 4-2-3-1, like kind of defensive with the two DMs. Yep. Is that what you normally do? Yeah, like against the Diamond, I try and keep the ball down the wing. Okay. So you use the 43 one wide or the 4 for 3 holding. Yeah. Okay. So I went with the 43 one wide because I haven't really tried it. Yeah, and then obviously you just sort of you based your formation against seeing what I was playing then. That That's I just use counter formations. Yeah. I just see I'll, I pick a weak link in their team. Yep. And try that attack down that side. And just just use the weakness of their team. Yeah. So obviously with my diamond formation. You think I'm pretty narrow, right? Yeah, I've got I've got two centre mids. I've got no one really out wide, and the centre mids that I've got aren't particularly pacey. Yeah. So that's my main issue, right, in this one. Yeah. Like my goal is to like stretch your play, so you come chasing to one side. Yeah. And you leave the other side exposed. Right. So it's all about manipulating. It's, yeah, stretching the play, and manipulating yeah, yeah. based on what formation that opponent is using. Um, I spoke to you beforehand, before we actually uh, started playing this game, and you said that. This is going to be a formation that you struggle with. You normally struggle with the four-one-two-one-two second variant, right? The, yeah. the diamond. Why? What? What is it about it that that you struggle with? Well, the way the midf midfield moves during the game, it always leaves the three, the cam and two strikers against the two centre backs a lot. Right. So you've got so you've over, always got overloaded. 
guess whether to stand off or try and intercept. Yeah. And there's always someone free. Okay. So you, right. you've got to try and make mistakes. But then sometimes I guess it's going to play into your hands because if you are playing that wider formation, you you know, and you're up against someone that you know you're better than, you're going to just spread that play out so wide, and it's going to give you so much space to run down the wing and stuff. Yeah, worst worst players usually will pull one full back out. Yeah. And then they'll just, I'll just play one two in my full back, and then the winger's through. But in this game, you were defending really well. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting it, so. I, I mean, I definitely put my try-hard pants on because I knew I was, I was coming up against a pro and I didn't want to get completely and utterly demolished. And obviously we're at nil-nil right now, yeah. but I'm pushing through with Suarez there and I do <laughs> actually manage to score uh, an audacious long shot, to be fair. Um, I couldn't believe that when I didn't. What could you have done there that, uh, to, 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 to do anything different? I mean, was that just I somehow got around PK, right? PK is a liability. Right. I've upgraded to Ramos now, but PK, like, I think he was involved in all three of the goals. Yeah. Or maybe two of them. Right, okay. So it was uh, a pace issue? Or? It's pace, and it's just. He's weak as well. Okay. Like, he's so tall, he's, but he's weak. For, for a big six foot odd defender, he, he doesn't have the pace or the strength to really. No. <laughs> to, and of, of course, he's great in real life and stuff, but we're talking like foot mechanics here. Yeah. So uh, your recommendations for centre backs in like La Liga, for instance, I guess. Like Varane. Ramos and Varane. Yeah, they they, they, they get the yeah. strong link together. They they just they just work, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm one nil up, and I'm throwing. I'm doing things like throwing the ball out from goalkeeper right there. Is that a mistake? What? It depends. I do the same thing. You do. Like, but it's high risk, high reward. Because you can yeah. keep the ball. Yeah, exactly. But like, sometimes you do make a mistake, and it will cost you. Okay. But like I just. I always throw it out as well. Yeah, it, it is it's a possession a, holding technique, yeah. right? It's better to throw it than boot it. Yeah, because you can be like so much more direct and just hoof it up the pitch, but I guess you've got probably more than like 50% chance of losing yeah. out on possession right there. So there you go, scoring your equaliser. Yeah. When we look back at the replay here, I want to know, oh, well, you skipped the replay. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> but just remembering yeah. from the goal, you, see, you somehow squeeze between like two of my defenders. Yeah. Is it is that just the Ronaldo factor? Like Ronaldo's a huge factor. What like what that. what can I do as a defender in that situation to uh, to, uh, to actually stop him at that point? Is it just down to like me being out of position with someone? You Did kind of have to guess where I'm gonna go. Yeah. Be so it, so it really is gonna be down yeah, to just guessing. Yeah. It's just, it's just awareness and trying to read what your opponent does during the game a lot. Yeah. Okay. And adapt to how he plays. And that's why I'm struggling against you a lot because I want to adapt thing. And that's usually my strong point. Do you think you struggled against me a little bit more than you normally would? Because obviously you play the weekend league, you've had 40 no's? Oh yeah, I've had five 40 no's. You, yeah, so, so you're a solid, solid player that can normally wipe the floor with pretty much anyone. To be honest though, I don't wipe the floor with many people. You don't? I win consistently, like 2-0, two, 3-0. Two nil, nil. Do you then shut up shop though? I, I don't push for more, I just, I just stay content with winning. Okay, yeah. And if and they're, they're, the they're going to go ultra attacking and then I'll score more. Right. But if they're going to stay balanced and just play the game as it is, I'll just keep the score line. Yeah. Did you see that little, that massive through ball yeah. that I just played there? Yeah. It seems a FIFA 18, there's like one or two of them per game that you can just, you're passing it around your defence, your midfield, and the somehow it just, it just opens up. Yeah, yeah. you play that. Uh, the the driven through ball or the, the 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 end result through ball type thing and it ends up just going through, and well I mean that time a little bit too long but yeah they're great goal scoring opportunities do you do you do them often or is that because obviously I just did it as like a hit and hope I I play the game as not really having much I don't have like a, a strategy you know in this game I I didn't go attacking I didn't change my formation I didn't move my players around. Uh, and we'll see throughout this game that, that you do that. You, yeah. you know, you've obviously got custom tactics on and things like that. All of these things really do help you to to play the game you want to play. Do you have to know what style you're going to play to use things like that? Yeah, I'm. I react to situations. I'm not a progressor. Okay. So I like to react. So if something's not going right, like you're playing the diamond, and yeah. like, you're pinning me in for a lot of the time. Yeah. So I thought three, four, two, one. Get more players in your half. So I can pin you in and okay. see how you react to it. Yeah, yeah. And then when I realise you want the best at defending that, mm -hmm. I switch to the holding because the further forward, the wingers. Yeah, and, and you I can, knew you I could dictate game, the play more. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
So you're very reactionary rather than going out all guns blazing from the start, playing your game. You'll just see, you'll try and judge the opponent first. I judge, the first one I look at is their team. If I think they haven't got the team to keep up mine, yeah. I'll go all guns blazing. Okay. But if you've got like players that could cause me trouble, I'll, got, I'll, I'll sit and just... You'll spend learn. what, the first like, five, ten minutes of a game? Fifteen, twenty minutes usually. All right, yeah, okay. But I could get a goal in that time, but I could see them that time. But for me, like neither of that matters. For yeah, so, so you don't learning. you don't get like overly stressed or anything. Yeah. Two if nils the scoreline where you should be like, all right, I've got to go now. Yeah, yeah. One nil is in FIFA you can score at any time. One so, through ball and you're through. So. So if I was to say go down two nil to you in this game, it didn't happen. But if I was to go two nil down within the first twenty minutes, am I pausing the game and and reshuffling and doing something, or do I just try and keep playing my my game? It depends how you're feeling. If you feel like you're doing all right. And you can create chances. Yeah, I guess you it could just depending stay. on the quality of the goals, yeah. right? So if they were two dodgy goals yeah. that could have just gone in, then stick with your style, but uh, have a couple of formations under your belt that you know how to play. Yeah, with prefer- stuff. preferably an attacking one, a defensive one, a wide one, a narrow one. Yeah, okay. My problem is I don't really have a narrow one. Yeah, my problem is I don't have a wide one. Yeah, <laughs> like when I go to narrow, um, the turn the game just turns into a pinball because I'm not used to playing in the middle congested. Yeah, yeah okay. But See, yeah. I, I like that, and I've actually noticed from the games we've been playing at the capture event that FIFA 18 one touch football ping pong tiki tack or whatever you want to call it seems to really work for me and the passes may be like really short really uh, really close really snappy uh, but I'll find my way to having a shot at some point a long shot you know any opportunity that's how I get mine yeah uh, really playing down the middle and just literally just bombarding your way through uh, yeah it's, it's just doing that because uh, if you don't, if if you think I'm not going to pass it first time, you're going to pull a defender out, and it's going to put someone out of position. But I've already played that first time pass. Now you get really unlucky yeah. there, hitting the post with is I, it Henrik Larsson? Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, I thought it was a guaranteed goal. It looked like it to me, yeah. and and the finesse shots we've seen have been pretty powerful yeah. so far. Uh, do I? Is this is this the moment? I think it is a moment. Yeah, that's PK again. Yeah, it's a definite yeah. PK problem. Uh, is it a PK problem or is it a Suarez is really high Suarez rated? is amazing. I love Suarez is my best striker in FIFA. I mean, I'm glad that I put him into this team against yeah. you because I don't think there's many strikers in the game there that are going to out outstrength the defender and score on the weak foot with the pressure of the defender still on him. Yeah, just super composed. You use him a lot, you say. Suarez, yeah. I like to play him in cam, but he's. He's my second striker. Yeah. I, I like to play Ronaldo, but Suarez is my top goal scorer usually. Okay. He makes runs off my striker. That's how I like my cam to play. Yeah. Because he's not like super super pacey, is he? I he's mean, just got good acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's super quick off the mark, but then he'll slow down over time. But he's just got the quality. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that game changer factor that Ronaldo has as well. Not many players do. Yeah. I guess. I guess you know Ronaldo, Messi, Suarez, Neymar. They've all got that sort of stuff, and we'll probably find out some of the icons have got that as well. Uh, you know, like yeah. the prime versions of certain. I think Ronaldo, Pele, Maradona, they all have it. Yeah, exactly, and and they're going to be good throughout the whole of the the the, the whole yeah, of. Yeah, they've seen their stats right? already, so they're, yeah. they're going to be all the way through. I mean, what's the highest Pele? What rate? What rate? Ninety-eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. he's like he's a team of the year. Yeah. Um, which is that's crazy. It's good, that's isn't great. It? Yeah. It's good, yeah. Because I think we've found that legends over the last been... couple of years have been they they get like worse and worse. Throughout the year, because they come team of the season, team, team of the season, year, yeah, yeah you don't year. need them. I mean, I score a pretty audacious yeah. shot right there. <laughs> Luis Suarez gets his hat trick for me, and I go two goals ahead against a Footwiz pro player. I'm buzzing at this point in time. <laughs> Not I'm sure worried. how I'm two goals ahead, um, but I mean, I it's a long shot at the end of yeah. the day. We found them to be pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, there's no nothing you can do. I guess you have to block him out before he even gets there. Yeah, I was like, should I call Neuer out? That's like, did you call him out? To, yeah. So that left that. If I got enough height on the shot, that was always going. Yeah, it was going. It was going. In. I was just hoping for a Neuer crazy save. Yeah, and then I knew I was in trouble, 
because I paused the game. You paused the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Phil is Richie is gonna do something crazy. Uh, I'm not sure I managed to catch it before. Uh, I might go into you know the the area in the menus here before we, we resume play uh, to see what you've changed to. Oh, I didn't, um, but yeah. I noticed it after a couple of uh, well upcoming goals, shall we say. You also made a sub, okay? Yeah. So who was that you brought on? I didn't see Sergio Aguero. Oh, Sergio Aguero comes on. Uh, and I think I brought on Kante there because I offered out one of the new quick subs. And I'm like, yeah, Casemiro looks tired. I'm going to bring on Kante. Nothing wrong with doing that, right? No. Um, Kante's a brilliant sub to bring on. Yeah. Uh, subs in general, you recommend them? Do you use Punch them a lot? I recommend. From what sort of time during the game? Ah, uh, 60th minute is usually the time. That's why Paul's at 60 minute. Yeah, 60 minutes okay. is the time where I'm like, all right, I have to do something now. Yeah. But I, 60 minutes... I go into and look at their stamina. So it's a stamina thing rather yeah. than like a reactionary tactical thing? Yeah. Okay. But there is the tactical side as well. But if say I'm, I need a goal, I bring yeah. on two wingers and one box box centre mid. Okay. To the engine. Yeah. But if I'm holding on, I'll just take off the most tired defensive players. Right. So if I've got two centre mids that are tired and like a right back, I'll put two centre mids and a right back on. Yeah. So you've got options on the bench. You've not just got a set three players you always bring no, up. No, I'll have uh, a player that can be a right back, left back. Yeah. A centre back. A player that can play DM. A okay. guy that can play centre mid. Yeah. A guy that can play a winger. Mm -hmm. And a guy that can play striker. So you, I mean, that leads on to a whole different topic of you're obviously not a bronze bencher. No. I or don't believe in it. No. You don't believe in bronze no. benching? I mean, well, I get full of your nose without it. Yeah. it, it it's a placebo thing, I think, anyway. Yeah, okay. Because a lot of people think it will match you up against lesser opponents, right? I guess that's why they do it. Why that, I that might be it. A, that might be a thing. Like, I do play good teams, but I've also got a good team anyway, so yeah. I haven't got an advantage over it. I don't need an advantage over it. Yeah, I okay. like to play people the same level as me. And, of course, it, it, it does give you that option. You're not stuck with that starting 11 there. If, if you're losing... Yeah. And you've got tired players up front. Who's going to be the game changer? Exactly. right. So you, you've always got this mentality of, I can get back into this game. It's just a matter of which players to use. Mm. I mean, since we've been talking for the last 30 seconds, scored you've goals. scored two goals. Yeah. So what did you do? What was that formation change you did? I went 3-4-2-1. So super attacking. Super attacking. But the free, I have three forwards to them. And they're going to be playing each channel. See, I, look, I, I check now. What's yeah. he done? He's just scored two goals against yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, I noticed that you've heavily overloaded the attack. Yeah. Even to the point where, like, a fullback, uh, Jordi Alba, is a part of it. He's a, he's a left mid, left yeah. wing or whatever. Um, so you obviously change at this point. And I think I keep going back in here to, to, to see what you're changing to. And you go to something different than what you started with. Yeah. For free holding's been my formation for years. It's right. in past FIFA's. The wingers wouldn't make the right runs. Okay. They would just stay static. But last year and this year, they actually do move. So you're trying to head back towards that one now, then? Yeah. You, you like it's basically that. the Barcelona style where you have your wingers high and wide yeah. to stretch the play, play it back and hope they make the diagonal inside. Mm -hmm. in, and yeah, I think my winner might have been that. Uh, yeah, it definitely is because it, it just surprised me that. Obviously, I, I get the formation change when you're losing or you're down by two goals. Yeah. Right. To, to heavily overload it. Did you not just want to like push for more, or are you scared that obviously that does give you a lot less defensive ability? And if I play one of them crazy through balls, then maybe I'll be through. It's like I don't feel comfortable through at the back. Okay. Like, I attack on my full backs a lot. Yeah. So when I don't have the option. I do. I am prone to making a mistake at centre back. Okay. So I'm looking. I'm like, oh no, there's no one there. And is that doubt? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. So now you're winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah excuse <laughs> me. Um, uh, three one, three one up. I was at one point, and now I'm losing four three. Henrik Larsson just uh, great it's positioning. Yeah. He's, got, he's got brilliant position. Really clinical. Get him in the right spot, and he is gonna do the business. Now this was the which version? Which rating? Uh, not even rated. So I think that's his prime. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, 90 rating, a uh, very high rated Henrik Larsson. So obviously his positioning, obviously his finishing, they're all going to be up there. Yeah. Their stats are going to be great. Uh, I know she didn't bring him off either. For you know, you obviously you brought Guerrero on, but it I was wasn't getting, for I was Larson. getting clips for 
Yeah, okay. Right. Larson. So, so, so yeah. is he someone? What's his stamina like? How does he? How does he fare? Like, I, I haven't checked his stamina, but okay. I've played him in every game and kept him on till the end, and he's been fine. And he oh. scored so many winners for me. Yeah, I think maybe so I trust the, him the higher end icons are going to be a little bit like that. They, they're going to be someone that it's like you build the team around, yeah. right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, Henrik Larson, uh, I just couldn't believe it to be fair, and I make a massive mistake here to be honest, and then I completely dive in. And yeah. not not the prettiest of goals, no. but you were, I felt like you were always going to score it at that point. It was a bad miss, but I feel like I was rewarded for the move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's only so much saving or whatever goalkeeper is going to be able to do. So uh, it was all just from me do, making a stupid challenge. So, and then yeah, and I was expecting in. it. I was expecting it. Mm. But uh, yeah. goalie dives the wrong way. Henrik Larsson gets, what, is that his hat trick? Goal right there, maybe he scored. Yeah, hat trick. Yeah. That's his hat trick. So he scored a 17 minute hat trick right there and completely and utterly changed the game for you uh, just by having what wider wingers to. to I think you did. You used to like, you utilized the wingers quite well. Yeah. To Because uh, a couple of those goals were like sweaty goals, sweaty passing goals. it across the goal. No, right? not, I say 95% of my goals are either cutbacks or intricate passing and running outside the box. Yeah. Yeah, actually, someone that had played you already before I played you gave me a little warning that you're going to like to pass the ball around the outside of the box uh, and really put that pressure on. Yeah, I didn't notice that so much. I think you. I struggled because you were congesting the midfield. Yeah, there obviously, no I, space. that narrow formation of mine is going to stop you doing that and actually yeah. probably push you to another strength of yours, which is playing Wait, out wide, yeah. right? Um, so I, it's a typical lasty bottle job, but <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, I end up losing the game 5-3. That is the end of the game right there. What were your reactions to, like... Because, obviously, have you heard? Have people said this, what sort of player I am? And uh, I did get advice that you don't like players that play slow. Uh-huh, yeah. So, when I took the lead, I just tried to take that on board. But I, that's not a natural thing I do. So, I was still playing quite direct yeah, as yeah. well while I was trying to do it. But your but, thoughts at 3-1 down were not, I'm going to lose here. You were like, what have I got to change to win here? In my head, like, I go into every game thinking I can lose. Yeah. So I just think if I can do re like wrecked stuff yeah. and I do come back, I'm like, yeah, if I lose, everyone loses. Mm -hmm. So you might as well change what you're doing and try and come back. Okay. Well... You've seen the end of the match facts there. Uh, I got done 60-40 on possession, which is not something I like. And overall, uh, I can't believe I bottled it right at the end. For the last sort of half an hour of the game, you know, obviously giving away four goals to get this, to get Richie the win uh, was probably expected, but I wish I could have held on longer. I think maybe not making enough substitutes and not changing my formation and stuff was one of the reasons why that happened. But hopefully you guys have found out a little bit more, you know, a bit, some advice from a pro FIFA player, someone that has been to events and stuff like that. Uh, I'll make sure that all of Richie's social media links are left down below in the description because you can expect more of this type of content from him. He wants to help you guys get better at the game. Uh, I'm not sure why because then it's just more competition for you, It's right? more competition, but then it, it makes you improve. Yeah, it benefits it, everyone, Yeah, right? if people improve and you're like, all right, now I've got to improve again. Yeah, exactly. And if the whole level is higher, the esports might get bigger. Yeah, great. So... Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. It's been a long old video, but we've had a good chat. Um, so smash a like if you have enjoyed. Sub to the channel if you're new around here, and we'll catch you next time. Peace.